Good morning, everybody. Um, this is Mr. Grimes coming at you from my home office. And um, we're going to start with week two of online learning. So let's do our thing. I'm going to open up the PowerPoint. And beautiful. Um, still a picture of me. I don't actually have much exciting new backgrounds to share with you. So we're going to go with the same one as last week. Um, Surviving without the cat. I'm wearing my very comfortable sweatshirts all the time, which is, you know, one of the perks of this being at home and not having to see people situation. Um, I hope you all are taking care of yourself. Um, I hope you're getting to go outside occasionally, um, but not with other people. I hope you're um, exercising if you can. I hope you're finding fun things to do. Um, work is important, but also, you know, having a happy life is important too. Um, so I hope you're doing well. Um, and without further ado, let's get started. Um, so this week's class is a continuation of last week's class. Um, and we are still trying to understand if America's decision to drop the atomic bomb on Japan was acceptable. Um, so we'll go over this a little more, but we've got a picture of the destruction of Hiroshima um, shown right here. Basically, the entire city is flattened. Um, this happens in Nagasaki, too. Was that an acceptable thing for the United States to do? Um, so you should hopefully have already done the warm-up and the evidence analysis. We'll go over the warm-up together right now. Um, we'll do the lecture, and then you're going to write a paragraph for the final part of class. Um, a quick reminder that you should not do this week's lesson until you have done last week's lesson. So Atomic Bomb Week 1 has lots of important information that you're going to need in order to succeed in this week. So if you haven't done that, stop everything, go back and do the Atomic Bomb Week 1 lesson before you do this week's lesson. And no worries, you can turn that one in late, you can turn this one in a little late, um, but do that one before you do this one. Cool. And a quick reminder about grades. Um, the, all of these assignments for history class are grade boosters. So if you do well on them, it will improve your overall grade in the course. So last week's assignment, if you did well on it, I will drop your lowest daily quiz grade of the whole semester and give you the A that you earned last week. Um, this week, it's even better. Um, I will drop your lowest skills score on a test. These are worth a huge percent of your grade. Um, and I will give you the higher score that you earn for writing the paragraph at the end of class today. Um, so today's lesson is worth a ton. Um, I hope you take this opportunity seriously. It can really improve your grade if you do a good job. Um, let's keep going. So you should have done this warm up question. Um, the question is, what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945? Um, the first correct answer is B, that the United States dropped one atomic bomb on each of those cities, completely destroying them. So on August 6th, they bombed Hiroshima, and August 9th, they bombed Nagasaki. This is using brand new technology that has been developed during World War II. Um, and Part of the government's logic is they want to show people what they've got and not to mess with the United States. Um, so these attacks are complete surprises. They come out of nowhere. People didn't know the United States had this technology until we used it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, and of course, the consequence of this is that um, over 100,000 people were killed. So that's answer D. Um, the estimates vary, um, but basically between 100 and 200,000 people were killed, some right away, and many of them slowly over time um, by the radiation that is released by the bombs. So the second warm-up question, why are these events so significant? Why do historians think so much about this question of whether we should have dropped the atomic bomb on Japan? And the first reason is A, that this is the only time that an atomic bomb has ever been used against another country. So in all of human history, the only atomic bombs used in warfare by the United States. So there are lots of bombs out there still. Will people use them in the future? 
as we think about that danger, we like to study what happened the only other time we've used them. Um, Japan surrendered shortly after these attacks. Um, the attacks were on August 6th and August 9th, and then August 10th, Japan formally surrenders. So they are definitely involved in the end of the war in the Pacific. Um, and the last one, as I mentioned, is that when you use an atomic bomb, radiation poison continues for years and years, continues to cause cancer and kill people and make people sick. And so this is sort of what makes atomic bombs different than regular bombs. They have these long-term consequences. Um, cool. And so that brings us to the last warm-up question, which is really the question you're going to be writing your paragraph at the end, about at the end of class. Based on what you remember from last week, was it acceptable for the United States to drop the atomic bombs on Japan? Um, we had some reasons. Were they legit reasons? Um, historians disagree about this question. Um, I have personally gotten into arguments with my friends about this question. Um, it is a complicated one, but I think there is good evidence on both sides and reasonable people can disagree. Um, and I'm really curious what you end up thinking based on the evidence that you see. So if you haven't done it yet, um, step two of this assignment is the evidence analysis that is looking at some quotes from last week's reading and trying to see how you might use them in your writing. Um, please do that first. Um, and when you have done that, you can pause this video, but when you have done that, um, let's go to step three, which is the notes. Um, and would you please type these notes in that box on the step three page? Um, you can title it, when violence is acceptable. Um, these notes are gonna feel like a review because they definitely are, but I want you to have these definitions written down so that you can use them in your writing later today. Um, so the first rule that should be a review is that wars or violence must have a just reason. We know that violence or wars can be just when we are protecting our country or we are saving innocent lives. And usually we think about this as saving innocent lives abroad. So the question with the atomic bomb, did we have a just reason? Was dropping the atomic bomb a way to save lives, to save American lives, as you can see, um, protect Americans who might've had to invade Japan, um, causing lots of death and destruction and Japanese people who would have died in an American invasion of Japan to end the war? On the other hand, you could think about all of the death and destruction that the atomic bomb caused and think, well, that's certainly not protecting innocent lives in other countries. Um, and so this is an open question. It's a tough one. Um, did dropping the atomic bomb have a just reason? Were we saving lives by doing so? Some say yes, some say no. The second rule um, is that your violence must be likely to succeed. Your war must be likely to succeed which means that it will help you win, help you achieve your goal. Um, doesn't make sense to use it if it's not gonna help you do anything, but if it is gonna help you achieve your goal, then maybe it's acceptable. Um, again, of course, America's big goal at this time is getting Japan to surrender. We want this war to be over. Germany has surrendered. We've been fighting Japan all over the place. We want Japan to surrender. Um, and, the dates of the timeline of the atomic bomb suggest that maybe the atomic bomb did have a role in making Japan surrender. Japan surrendered um, four days after the first bombing and one day after the second bombing in Nagasaki. On the other hand, some of our readings from last week indicate that other events were happening um, specifically related to the Soviet Union that might have been the real reason that Japan surrendered. And, if Japan was going to surrender anyways, did we need to do it? Did we need to drop this bomb? So that's a thing you could write about. Um, on the right-hand side here, this picture at the bottom actually shows um, that is the Japanese sort of like foreign minister signing the papers that end the war, signing the treaty. He got on an American warship sort of right off of Tokyo um, and signed a treaty saying the war is over, we're done. Um, so the war ended shortly after the atomic bomb, but was it because of the atomic bomb? And of course, our last rule is that violence must be a last resort. Um, and you'll remember, things are a last resort when we have tried all of our other options. Um, were there other ways we could have gotten Japan to surrender 
without completely destroying two of their cities. Um, if you go back to the readings from last week, you'll see a few different ideas that people have had for how we might have done that. On the other hand, like, is that fair? Or having been at war with Japan for so long, was it like, well, we've got to do what we've got to do? Um, again, you're going to get to sort of look at that evidence and decide, do you think war is our last resort? Or did we have other options? In your paragraphs, you only need to write about one of these. Just reason, likely to succeed, or a last resort. It's just one paragraph. People write whole books about this. I want you to try to focus your argument on just one of those reasons um, and have some evidence to back it up. Um, speaking of evidence, I'd like to review one more thing with you before I send you on the writing. Um, and that is the skill of introducing and citing quotes in your writing. So taking an expert quote, properly putting it into your writing so that your writing flows really nicely. Um, so here's an example quote. Um, Social distancing or staying home except for emergencies is the best way to stop the spread of coronavirus. This was said by Dr. Anthony Fauci, the leader of the US government's infectious disease team in an interview on CNN on March 28th, 2020. Um, you might've seen this guy, Anthony Fauci, um, on the news. He is sort of like the main guy working for the federal government who talks about what we need to do to solve this coronavirus problem. Um, and the biggest advice he's giving is this like, we have to stay home so it doesn't spread. And it sucks and it's boring and we have to do it. Um, but right now, I would like you, there's another box on the bottom of your notes page or in the middle of your notes page. Um, would you please pause this video and try to rewrite that quote and that information about who said it um, so that it would be properly included in a paragraph, like according to and all that fancy stuff and punctuate it right. Please pause this video and try to rewrite that quote and that source information as you would include it in a paragraph. Okay, hopefully you've gotten a chance. Um, let's go over that and correct some of what you've done or congratulate yourself on getting it all right. Um, so there's the basic format for including a quote and citing it that we've been practicing. And this should look really familiar to you. I've also used some fun colors um, to show it. So according to, it's always gonna be the same. Um, and we'll talk about how we could change that language up later, but for now let's, practice getting this down right according to and then the name of the person or the expert that you're writing about put a comma then we put the quote and then after the quote in parentheses we put the publication and then a period so it would look something like this um, according to dr anthony fauci social distancing blah 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 is the best way to stop the spread of coronavirus and then in parentheses we put the publication that is the organization that put this information out there, the magazine, the newspaper, the website, that sort of stuff. Um, so this is it. Pretty straightforward. Um, a couple places I'd like you to pay attention to the punctuation. Um, first, after the author, we have a comma, a space, and then we start the quote with quotation marks and then go straight into the quote. So there's only one space there between the comma and the quotation marks. Um, the second place to focus is down here. Um, again, at the end of the quote, we put quotation marks. You'll notice there is no period here. Um, you got quotation marks, you got a space, and then you got the start of the parentheses. Um, so that's all we're doing. And then go straight into publication. And then at the very end, you have the close parentheses and the period. And if you want to make it fancy, the publication, you could put it in italics. It's like this sort of like slanted writing. Um, that'll make it look super professional. If this is really easy for you and you want to take the next step with introducing and citing quotes, you can do this sort of advanced format, um, which is the same exact thing. The only difference is that you would add the qualifications of your author or your expert, why we should trust this person. I um, mean, that would go before the quote, after you say who it's from. So again, you'll see our example according to Dr. Anthony Fauci the leader of the US government's infectious disease team, social distancing, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, I think this is 
helpful for making people trust your writing more. You're saying why we should believe this person. Um, and just, you know, again, it's stepping your writing up, making it more complicated, but also um, stronger in the end. And again, um, just paying quick attention to the punctuation here, you have a comma after uh, the person's name, a space, and then just say who they are. And at the end, you put another comma, a space, and then you can start your quote. Um, I, you should see on your worksheet, I put both of these examples on there, um, are these formats for doing this. So check it out. Um, you'll be able to use that as you are doing your writing. So speaking of the writing, um, you need to choose just one of the questions on step four to answer. Either tell us was dropping the bomb just, was it likely to succeed, or was it a last resort? But only one of those things. And then you're gonna write one paragraph that answers that question. It's probably not gonna be a super long paragraph. You need a claim, you need one piece of evidence that's all properly introduced, and you need to analyze that evidence and then throw in a conclusion sentence. So it's not gonna be a ton, but I'm looking for it to be really high quality. Um, you'll see there's a checklist of all the information you need to include. Um, and I will be reading this work as you turn it in. And I might give you some comments to improve it. Um, but yeah, I think you got it. Um, as always, email me, comment in Google Classroom, send me a text message. If you need anything, I will do my best to respond within 24 hours and uh, hopefully much sooner than that. Um, thanks to all of you who are working really hard um, and getting this done. Um, I really appreciate your commitment to your learning and I miss you all a lot. So I hope to see you soon. And in the meantime, good luck with your writing.